hello everyone welcome back in previous lecture i explained about the chip thickness ratio in the cutting tool how it is measured and about the orthogonal and oblique cutting so here you can see in the orthogonal and oblique cutting the two basic methods of metal cutting using a single point cutting tool are orthogonal and oblique here on orthogonal it is you can see it is 2d only two dimensional while oblique cutting is three dimensional or 3d orthogonal cutting takes place when the cutting face of tool is 90 degree to the line of action of tool this is the nine line of action of tool and cutting edge is at the 90 degree and here you can see the chip is formed at the exactly at the 90 degree angle and if the cutting face is inclined at an angle less than 90 degree to line of action of tool the cutting action is known as oblique now any angle less than 90 is considered in the oblique cutting the cutting edge is inclined at angle less than 90 degree now here another figure you can see the example of orthogonal and oblique cutting this is the orthogonal cutting tool and here it is the oblique cutting tool now the orthogonal cutting here you can see the cutting edge remains normal to the direction of tool or workpiece okay so the normal perpendicular to it or here it the tool remains at the inclined okay the direction of chip flow velocity is normal to cutting cutting edge of tool the direction of chip flow velocity will be normal to the cutting edge of tool while the direction of chip flow velocity is at an angle with normal to the cutting edge of tool and the angle is known as chip flow angle okay so here the direction of chip will be at the perpendicular to the tool and it will at certain angle it's normal to the cutting edge and that is called as chip flow angle and here it is two components of forces acting first one is cutting and second one is the thrust force cutting force component and second one is the thrust force so the metal cutting may be considered as a two dimensional cutting okay so the metal cutting process is 2d and here there are three component of forces that is cutting force radial and thrust force or feed force so the metal cutting may be considered as a 3d okay there will be only here two forces and here it will be three forces now the cutting edge being oblique shear force acts on larger area and thus tool life is increased so this is about the orthogonal and oblique cutting now next is chip formation so every conventional machining process involves formation of chips chips formation is a complex phenomenon where force is applied to the workpiece to remove material from the workpiece and the metal is sheared along the shear plane which makes an angle of phi with direction of tool travel because of shearing action as we have seen in the earlier so the shape and size of chips obtained depends upon the type of material to be cut and other cutting conditions it also indicates the type of and quality of pieces the there are three basic types of chips are produced in any conventional machining there are majorly three types that is segmented or discontinuous it is discontinuous and in form of part that is the segmented type of chip then there is continuous type of chip which is in in continuous another is continuous chip with built up edges there are some built up edges formed in it so first one is here the discontinuous chip 
or the segmented chip here you can see the example or the figure the chips are formed in the form of breaks or or discontinuity form okay so this type of chips consist of separate plastically deformed segments which loosely wear uh, to each other or completely unconnected so in this type of chip they are plastically deformed segments which loose loosely wear each other and completely unconnected there is no connection between them and these are produced by actual fracture of metal ahead of the cutting edge and the fracture of metal takes place when the magnitude of compression force reaches the fracture limit of metal so here the fracture of metal takes place when the magnitude of compressive force reaches the fracture limit so when the magnitude of this compressive force reaches the fracture limit the material breaks and fracture takes place now the major reason for fractured or segmented chip is the material that is used as brittle or cast iron or it is made of uh, brass or casting so low and another reason is low speed and high depth of cut while cutting ductile materials there can be discontinuous chips and another is small rack angle to ductile material and segment chips okay so small rack angle can also form the segmented or discontinuous chips then there is here the continuous chips okay so this type of chip are produced when material ahead of the tool continuously deforms without fracture and flows off the rack face in form of continuous segments okay so here the continuous segments are form of the chip the some factors which are responsible for continuous chips are first one is the material that is ductile like steel copper aluminum mostly the discontinuous chips are formed in the brittle material while the continuous chips are formed in the ductile material like steel copper aluminum another reason is the very high speed high speed cutting large rack angle sharp cutting edge efficient cutting fluid low friction between tool and chip these are the reasons for continuous chips when there is friction is lower then efficient coolant sharp cutting edge large rack angle high speed cutting okay and ductile material in continuous chip there are cases where the built up edge are formed on either on the tool side or either on the chip side so this type of chip is similar to continuous chip except that the built up edge is formed on the nose of the tool and the built up edge is formed owing the action of welding of chip material on the tool point because of high friction between work material with tool this type of chip are undesirable because they result in high power consumption poor surface finish high tool wear and reduction in tool life so this is about the chips and its type now let us see about the cutting forces in the here the cutting process of the single point cutting tool okay in in the work we have seen in the previous diagram and here the cutting forces in 2d orthogonal cutting is completely shown this is our shear plane okay this is our shear plane and it is having angle of pi now the geometry we know the tool geometry and type of workpiece and we wish to know the f that is the cutting force here 
the tool will be exerting the cutting force in this direction okay so uh, the tool will be in this direction it will be exerting the cutting force and there is the n that is the normal to cutting force this is the normal force acting on this direction when in the normal or perpendicular direction and the resultant of this will be in this direction so these are the two forces okay so resultant will be in this direction now the another type of force is here acting is the shear force or that will be along the plane of shear okay there is this the plane of shear that is the shear force f s you can see over here and there will be fc cutting force and thrust force acting on it now the cutting force will be in this direction while the thrust force will be in this direction okay so you can see the difference now these are the various forces acting while the cutting process is taking place and this is the complete free body diagram you can practice it by drawing it okay so the we have to use this diagram to form the merchant circle and we can find these forces using the merchant circle diagram okay now let us see how the merchant circle is drawn so here is the merchant circle diagram now it is having this resultant force as here the cutting force will be acting in this direction because the cutting action is taking place while the shear force is acting in the shear plane direction here you can see the shear force is acting and the normal to shear force is called as normal force okay f n this is the f n force normal okay of the shear force and the cutting force perpendicular to the cutting force that is called as the thrust force and thrust force is in the direction of depth of cut of the workpiece okay so that will be the ft that will be thrust force and there will be force of tool and a normal force that is called as n of uh, normal force and force okay exerted by the tool and perpendicular by the tool okay so the tool forces will be of this two type now the rack angle as we know that the rack angle this is the face of tool and so this is the face of tool and the perpendicular direction this is the alpha that is the rack angle rack angle and this is the shear plane angle and this is our clearance angle now the angle over here is suppose this is the beta angle so this angle will become the beta minus alpha this is the 90 degree okay and this is the alpha angle so this angle will be supposed to be beta minus alpha and this angle is phi now we have to find this forces so uh, you will be so the resultant over here this resultant and this resultant also this all these resultant can be combined and all the forces can be demonstrated in single circular form okay now uh, how to find the relationship of various forces of uh, acting on the chip with horizontal and vertical cutting force for merchant circle diagram here you can see how the forces are found and these are the simple angle relation between all so this is the first this triangle this is nomenclature as oeb then the second triangle is ba o okay these two triangle are used in which the first we have to find the f so f is equal to o to a or which is equal to this c to b distance and here the c to b is equal to this c to 
g dis uh, distance and g to b distance and e to d distance this is only for calculation purpose okay so you can understand easily so e to d or you can see the c to g distance is equal to e to d and plus this distance over here g to b will be the same now so we have to find the force so the force we know from the this triangle this is the al alpha phi so this is the fc and this side e to d is equal to fc sin alpha this is the uh, opposite side okay and so we can measure fc sin alpha and another over here this triangle if you look at this this is also alpha angle and with the ft it is making so here it is the adjacent side so it will be equal to the ft cos alpha similarly we want to find the n okay the normal force which is the n so n is equal to ab is equal to o2 d distance o2 d over here minus o2 c okay so we will get this distance d to uh, or we can say the a to b distance okay we have want to measure this a to b distance okay or that is the normal force so o to d minus o to uh, c to d we will minus this c to d sorry okay so this will be same but by measuring this we know that o to d okay o to d is equal to fc cos alpha because here it is the alpha and it will be fc cos alpha and g to e is equal to this and here it is also angle the alpha so it will be equal to the ft sin alpha okay so this is how the all the measurement are done so the, remember this the uh, angle on this diagram also which is very useful for measuring okay now the coefficient of friction mu is equal to 10 beta here the 10 beta mu is equal to f upon n so this is the coefficient of friction where the friction angle is beta so this is how the f and n are calculated another uh, is how to calculate the ff okay so we want to calculate ff ff is equal to we will use this triangle now ff and this a to e so o to a is equal to o to b distance minus a to b distance okay so o to so b will be the same but here the a to b can be equal to c to d so it will be c to d so we can measure the shear force is equal to fc this will be the cos side okay the near adjacent side so it will be equal to the fc cos phi minus it will be ft sin phi that is the shear force okay now we want to measure again the f uh, shear force will be equal to r cos beta minus alpha plus phi with the resultant we can see that it is equal to the cos side or we can say the r cos beta minus alpha plus phi okay here it is the beta minus alpha plus phi so for this triangle we can say the f s we can say directly it is the opposite uh, ne nearer side so it will be the r cos this beta minus alpha plus phi another equation for the normal fn we can measure fn is equal to fc sin phi plus ft cos phi similarly it is fn is equal to a to e is equal to a to d plus d to e okay so a to d is equal to b to c 
while the d2 e uh, is equal to this with use of this triangle so this is the alpha so it will be the ft cos alpha d2 e and here it will be this so it will be the fc sin alpha and also fn can be written as fs in the form of fs here fs then beta minus alpha plus phi okay so or we can say alpha plus beta minus alpha okay so this is how the all forces are calculated and here it is completely enlisted the all the forces f n f s f n and another form of f n as well as the f s as well so here the f t the cutting force the f t and f c they are generally the in form of resultant as written as here this this is the angle beta minus alpha here you can see this is the beta angle and it will be the beta minus alpha angle so it will be r sin beta minus alpha or r cos beta minus alpha so the results from the merchant circle diagram we get the friction force normal force mu shear force then shear normal to the plane and the, all the resultant is equal to the shear force square plus this the cutting force or thrust force or we can say this is a shear or normal or this is the friction uh, the force of tool and normal force now all the resultant will be equal okay so the uh, this is it for today's lecture thank you very much for listening me carefully have a nice day